Hello and welcome to module 45 of chemical kinetics and transition state theory. In the last module, uh, we discussed the RRK way of looking at unimolecular decay. We had in two modules ago shown that uh, very naive way of doing unimolecular decay does not match us with experiment exactly. Uh, Rice, Ramsberger and Kassel had presented a different model. Uh, on how to calculate unimolecular rate constant. Today we are going to do even better. Uh, what we had learnt in the last module is that it can do very well, but there are a few parameters that come ad hocly that we fit so that you get the best uh, match with experiment. But that is not very satisfactory. We should be able to get everything looking at the molecule. I should not rely on experimental data at all. I should be able to calculate everything. Okay? So, today we will uh, look at what Marcus had to say about it. So, Marcus again was a, a brilliant theoretician. He was essentially given this problem uh, that was discussed that earlier people RRK had solved in 1920s, late 1920s and it was left like that. Marcus in 50s was given this problem essentially as a starting problem of his postdoc and he was asked uh, let us see what you make of it. Uh, and this is what Marcus made of it. He basically cracked it in one or two years, he completely uh, uh, gave the final correct answer. Okay, so, we will look at what Marcus had to say. Uh, once more, let me uh, uh, revise for you what our problem is. So, our problem is we are studying A going to B with the overall rate constant K1. So, uh, rate we have defined to be K1 into concentration of A. Our mechanism is 2A going to A star plus A, A star going to B. Within this, we have discussed in a, a couple of modules that we can work out a rate constant of uh, this K1 as this integral. The important point that uh, I want to highlight is that uh, A, A star which is an excited state and B once more A star is not the transition state. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is K1, this is K minus 1 and this is K2. Uh, so, the idea here in doing this integration is that we are calculating this K1, K minus 1 and K2 at a given energy E. So, this is my energy E. So, I see okay, I, if I was at that energy E, if K1 excited me to that energy E, uh, then my A star has a choice at that energy E to either move forward and become a product or come down and uh, become A again. Okay. So, this uh, K1, K minus 1 and K2 cannot be divorced away from each other. They must be cal calculated at that given energy E and not individually averaged out. Okay. Uh, so, with that uh, we had written this formula and in the last module we looked at a way to calculating these uh, numbers uh, k1, k2 and k minus 1 using the RRK model. So, let us look at what Marcus said. Uh, the first thing is calculating k2 that is one big thing that is different. Uh, once more, I really like drawing these pictures. So, let me draw it again. Uh, K2 is this one. So, this K2 I am calculating at a constant energy and I have already shown you that uh, RRK model is actually not very good at calculating this uh, constant energy rate constants. RRK M has to be used which uh, is much more elaborate which makes much fewer assumptions, which looks at the molecule much closer and includes all possible vibrations and rotations in a more intrinsic fashion. And with that we calculated a K R R K M by this formula where G is the density of states and W is the total number of states. Okay. 
So, this is what we are going to use for k2 of e. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to write this formula. You have to calculate this w and g for each molecule and that is the way it has to be. Each molecule is different. Each molecule has a different bunch of our, uh, oscillators there. So, uh, it is not a good idea to generalize all molecules as uh, simply a bunch of harmonic oscillators at some frequency w. A more uh, general formula has to be written that must be calculated differently for each molecule. So, that is point one number one that is which is different from RRK model. Uh, the second is k minus 1 where Marcus made no change. It is exactly the same as RRK. We calculate uh, this k minus 1 as the collision theory decay rate constant of losing energy from this highly excited energy E to coming down to the ground state okay, at thermal energy. So, we discussed this in the last module, so I am not going to elaborate too much in it. Uh, the rate constant given by collision theory is here and uh, there are two critical assumptions. K minus 1 is not a function of energy, it is a function only of temperature. Uh, the picture again is that uh, this energy will be close to activation energy which is anyway a large amount of energy. So, small deviations uh, uh, around the activation energy does not matter. And if the deviation is too large, then the rate constant will anyway be too small. So, again it does not matter. So, for all practical purposes, I can calculate this k minus 1 uh, as a constant. Okay. Uh, the second thing is there is no uh, collision factor here, there is no react, uh, all collisions are supposed to be equally reactive. And that again uh, the underlying idea is that uh, you are having a very large energy E anyway. And so, if you are colliding, uh, the probability of losing energy is always very high. Okay. So, all collisions are uh, reactive in that sense. Okay. Uh, the final picture is k1 over k minus 1. Uh, in RRK, we had written a very concrete expression for it. No such expression can be written here. We, we derived this expression in the last uh, module. Uh, this uh, comes from the picture that A and A star, if uh, this is k1, this is k minus 1. So, the k equilibrium is A star by A, this is 2A plus A, which is equal to k1 over k minus 1. And this equilibrium constant is nothing but the relative population of A star at uh, in, with respect to A. Uh, so, that then can be calculated as the density at energy E into E to the power of minus beta E, that is the Boltzmann factor and that is the density. So, this is Boltzmann factor and this is density. So, again uh, to re-emphasize our population is a product of two numbers of two quantities. One which is E to Boltzmann factor that is the overall weight of being at that energy E multiplied by how many states are accessible at that energy. So, it must be a product of those two. If at uh, even if the energy is high, but you just have a lot of states that are accessible at that energy, it still makes it more probable. Okay. And the denominator is of course, the partition function that normalizes its probability a partition function into some factor of h, okay. some normalization constant in short. Again, Marcus said uh, do not try to simplify this, there is no meaning in this. Uh, this g must be calculated for a molecule uh, separately. You cannot generalize it, you cannot say that we have a general formula for all possible molecules. Uh, th th that attempt is not going to work. So, for a given reaction, you better calculate g of e separately. And we have spent one module on looking at how to calculate this g. So, I am not going to repeat all of that. But uh, again we divide g into rotations and vibrations and we figure out ways on how to calculate rotational g and vibrational g. For vibration we often do sum of states, rotations can be treated classically, all of this was discussed earlier. So, you can go back and have a look at that module again on how to calculate g. But all Marcus is saying is it is upon you, how do you can calculate this g, how accurate g you want. But I am not going to give you a common prescription for all molecules. 
that's just a bad way of looking at things. All molecules have their own uh, individual personalities. You do not go ahead and see to bunch all these uh, molecules together. Uh, so that's pretty much RRKM answer. He, all R, Marcus is saying is let's keep things general. You keep you calculate this K1 over K minus 1. I should write R to the present reactant. A remember is a reactant. You calculate this uh, K1 over K minus 1 separately for each molecule. You calculate this K2 separately for each molecule. K minus 1 he dared not hinder. He said you will calculate using collision theory. And do this integration. So it is more manual. It is not an easy answer now. Uh, RRK had given a much more simpler answer. But a simpler answer often has problems. Uh, you have to, uh, this it, RRK answer was ad hoc. Uh, we had to figure out what this S is. We have to figure out K dagger experimentally. Here we are saying, okay, we will look at each molecule and we will look at it very closely. But we will get that answer right now. And we will get it uh, only by theory. We will not retort to experimental data. Okay. So what are the required parameters now for RRKM? Uh, K minus 1 of course is coming from collision theory. Uh, activation energy can come from experimental data or you can do an electronic structure calculation these days. Back in Marcus's day that was much harder, but now things are very different. You can actually ask a computer to cal get what this activation energy is. Uh, w and G comes from the very refined uh, structural information of that particular molecule, which usually comprises of frequencies, the vibrational frequencies and moment of inertia. Moment of inertia of course for calculating uh, rotational g and w and frequencies for vibrational g and w. Okay. Uh, here we do not retort to experiment. Uh, so RRKM is a more general theory compared to RRK. RRK is actually a special limit of RRKM uh, and I will show that in the next slide. Uh, RRK is a very specific model of S harmonic oscillators all with the same frequency. And S is arbitrary in RRK. We choose the S that matches the experiment the best rather than the other way around. Uh, RRKM looks at uh, properly at the vibrational and rotational modes. Uh, RRK requires ad hoc fitting of experimental data. RRKM does not. Uh, so let me just point out one special thing that I said in the last slide, which is that uh, RRK is a special uh, case of RRKM. So let us look at RRKM theory and apply it to the RRK model. RRK model is uh, no rotations, uh, S harmonic oscillators with frequency uh, omega, all with the same frequency. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we have a general prescription now given by this K2 and K1 over K minus 1. So, let us calculate this general prescription for this specific model. Okay. Uh, K1 over K minus 1 I really do not need to because we already calculated K1 over K minus 1 using this specific formula only when we were deriving RRK formula. So you will end up getting the same formula that we had derived uh, two modules ago, uh, last module actually, I am sorry. Uh, so okay, K, K1 over K minus 1 was already derived with this formula and we, uh, for this particular model. So let us not discuss that. Let us look at K2. K2 actually looks very different now. It looks like some W dagger over HGR where K2 RRK we showed was equal to this. Are they the same thing written in different languages? Let us find out. Okay. W dagger, there here we have to be extremely careful. This is a very common mistake that almost everybody makes. W dagger is a uh, total number of states excluding reaction coordinate. So this total number is calculated for 1 degrees of freedom less than the total degrees of freedom. Okay. 
so let me just write w of e as e to the power of s divided by s factorial into h bar omega to the power of s because uh, all omega i's equal to omega in my specific model of RRK. Uh, arbitrarily I call the first mode as a reaction coordinate. You are free to choose the 13th mode as reaction coordinate if 13 is your favorite number. So this is equal to e to the power of s minus 1, 1 degree of freedom less compared to total. Okay? Uh, not even this, I have made a mistake, so let me correct my mistake. It is e minus e a. So, I am calculating W dagger at E minus E A. So, E minus E A to over S minus 1 divided by S factorial H bar. Uh, I am making the same mistake. I told you everybody makes this mistake. So, do I. I am not immune to it either. S minus 1 factorial H bar omega to the power of S minus 1. So, instead of using S, we must use S minus 1. G R is the same. GR will have all s uh, h bar omega to the power of s. Again this factor will become h bar omega to the power of s. So uh, I have w and I have g. I have to just divide these two. Uh, you get E minus E a. Uh, divided by e to the power of s minus 1. You already start noticing that we are getting terms similar to this. Uh, s minus 1 factorial will cancel when I divide these two. h bar omega will not cancel. I will get h bar omega to the power of s divided by h bar omega to the power of s minus 1. Uh, so, I am left with 1 h bar omega. So, I am left with h bar omega divided by h into E minus E A uh, H bar is nothing but H over 2 pi so this is a very neat result we get compare these two results so when I compare these two results I get K dagger is equal to omega over 2 pi So, RRKM is even giving a prescription to RRK. He is saying you do not have to uh, remember earlier for RRK we had said that to calculate K dagger we have to look at experimental data at large pressure or concentration. RRKM comes in and says you do not know what I can tell you even a better answer. The frequency that common frequency that you had chosen K dagger is nothing but omega over 2 pi. Okay? So, it is a very neat picture and it makes sense as well. Because omega over 2 pi, well, uh, is also the frequency of my reaction coordinate. All coordinates have same frequency. So, uh, this is let us say my reaction coordinate. And uh, k dagger should represent uh, this frequency somehow. Okay. K omega over 2 pi is the number of uh, times I hit the barrier uh, height at uh, per unit second. So, this must appear somehow and it uh, RRKM shows that it does appear properly. Okay? So, I do this general prescription and omega over 2 pi comes very naturally. Okay? So, I have given you a big comparison of the three different ways of calculating this unimolecular decay rate constant. The Lindemann version is what was the original model. I look at k1, k2 and k minus 1 as a function of temperature. I do not look at them in a correlated fashion. I do my simple kinetics. Uh, use steady state hypothesis and get my answer. Okay. The required input for this of course is k1, k1, k minus 1 and k2 that you can calculate in different ways. But we know that this does not match as well with experiment. We have to do better than this. So, RRK in 27 and 28 gave a different prescription that you must integrate over all possible energies. Okay. Instead of looking at k1 and k2 independently, they are correlated. You calculate them at a given energy and integrate over all possible energies. Okay. Uh, so, K1 and K2 are concerted and that is also true in RRKM. They both start with the same formula. Uh, RRK 
specifically assumes that my molecule consists of s harmonic oscillators with no rotations and all harmonic oscillators have the same frequency. So, the required parameters for RRK is this s which is usually given by the uh, best fit k minus 1 that comes from collision theory uh, e naught is simply the barrier height that can, can come either from experiment or electronic structure and k dagger can either come from high pressure limit or as we understand it we it can be looked at, looked at as omega over 2 pi which is the frequency of the reaction coordinate. RRKM does slightly better uh, S should not be needed S is nothing but the total number of vibrational modes. So, I will remove S that is my bad. It requires K minus 1 which comes from collision theory and E naught of course also is needed which comes from uh, experimental data or uh, electronic structure calculations. But beyond that uh, we calculate G and W for RRKM which requires structural information of uh, reactant and transition state uh, such as frequencies and moment of inertia which will typically come from electronic structure calculations. They can also come from experiment if you want. Okay. Uh, so, RRKM is a more advanced model and is very actively used till today. Uh, one point let me just uh, add since we are at the end of it, uh, there is a difference between R, R and K by the way. R and R were Rice and Ramsberger and K was Cassell. R and R uh, calculate this K2 classically. They follow all the same prescription like this, all three of them R, R and K. Uh, but Cassell was actually the first person to uh, highlight that uh, K2 should be calculated using quantum mechanics and you will get a better answer. But nonetheless even K, uh, uh, even if he got a better answer, uh, he has to calculate this S rather ad hoc here. Okay, it does not matches correctly. Okay. So, today we have looked at uh, a comparison of uh, RRK and RRKM theory. Uh, we have looked at uh, how we can RRK and RRKM both improve over Lindemann and RRKM improve over RRK. And RRKM is giving the most general prescription. It requires more hard work, you have to look at each molecule separately. It, it, RRKM said that there is no easy prescription, each molecule is, has its own individual personality and you must calculate its rate constant accordingly. Thank you very much. Thank you.